Whoa! You got to get thing oh. oh, big crash! Big crash! You're as nearly dead. Oh, that is quite terrifying. We should find somewhere safe to stop. Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to Perth in Australia. This is the final stop of our epic Australian adventure. We just got here from Sydney, where we had an amazing live podcast event at Stash, which is a big car storage facility, but also visited Chrome Temple, who are like a car investment fund. They had some amazing cars knocking around. And we actually went out in a McLaren Elva. I got behind the wheel of the Elva, my first time behind the wheel of that windscreenless, roofless car. But anyway, regular viewers of this channel know that I actually started this year here in Perth, visiting the Lee Collection, which at the time I proclaimed, well, was the kind of craziest, most wild supercar collection in Australia. Well, since I visited just 12 months ago, the collection has basically doubled, if not tripled. So today, we're gonna go and catch up with the Lee Collection team and check out some of the latest additions. <laughs> Now, of course, throughout the year, I've stayed in touch with the Lee Collection and I've been very aware of some of the cars they've been adding to the collection. But that did not prepare me for when I just walked into this room. Oh my God, no matter who you are, where you are, where you've come from and what you've seen before, nothing can stop your jaw from hitting the floor when you see all of this. Now, if you didn't see my original video from earlier in the year where I highlighted a lot of the cars in this room, uh, I'll put a link to it below so you can go back because today I just want to focus on the new additions because there are so many. If we were trying to do a full sort of garage collection tour once again, we'd be here for 14 days and you will see a lot of stuff in the background as I make my way around pointing out some of those new additions. But yeah, as I say, if you want to see me sort of talk through anything in detail, some of the startups, some of the cars we took for a drive, um, go and check out the links in the description. So let's kick things off with two versions of a car I'm currently low-key obsessed with, the Mercedes McLaren SLR. I keep telling everyone I think these cars are massively undervalued. Obviously came out at the same time as the Enzo Ferrari and the Carrera GT. Both of those cars valued at well over a million pounds. These things circa 300,000 pounds in the UK. Now these are two very special versions. The orange car, it's like a Daniel Ricciardo honey badger. SLR MSO edition. I've driven an S MSO edition before. They often get sort of uh, performance enhancements as well. But yeah, this one's got lots of sort of Daniel Ricciardo bits on it. So very cool to see being here in Australia. The one beside it is like a sort of MSO or, or, or McLaren heritage car, essentially a refurbished SLR. You can take your McLaren SLR back to McLaren themselves. They fully refurbish it, repaint it, add different bits, etc., etc. There is a third SLR in the collection, as soon to be here, HDK, which is essentially a road going race car in the craziest paint job I have ever seen in my life. I'm sad that I didn't see it here in Perth, but hopefully at some point I'll get to check it out. We have a trio of Aston Martins, the 770 DBS Ultimate finished in green and tan, and then two V12 Vantages, the Coupe, and then the sort of Roadster Speedster as well. This one in a slightly more subdued silver with sort of tan interior, and then the white Roadster, unbelievable with this red interior. And there is a matching or sort of a, uh, a sister car to this, which I'm sure we'll come on to later. I'm not sure if the GTR was here last time, but there's some crazy Liberty Walk GTR without a wing, which I think is quite a nice detail. And then the Sian, the Lamborghini Sian, that definitely was here last time, still looking absolutely wild. Now, a whole load of Lambos have joined the collection. There's one 
very special one tucked around the corner that we'll go and see in a second. You can see just behind me, one of the Kuntashes is here, which is essentially a, an event store with the Kuntash body. But it's a very cool thing that harks back, obviously, to one of Lamborghini's most iconic models. I'm hearing that this is very popular amongst the collection. It's been doing a lot of miles since it turned up. And I have to say, in the Stormtrooper white, it does look pretty cool. I actually don't know what this is. <laughs> I mean, I think it, it was a, a Maybach. Maybe it was Kim Kardashian. Yeah, um, let's move on. Now this for me perfectly sums up the Lee collection and this is why I love these guys. They are truly enthusiasts in every shape of the word that it was. Well, just look at this. We've got a beautiful, stunning 812 competition tailor-made car. One of the first I've seen really in the flesh. It's so big this thing but obviously the ultimate version of uh, Ferrari's current flagship V12 and then next to it I, I don't, again, I don't know what I'm looking at. This is some kind of highly modified F8 with FXX styled winglets. I think it's an F8 Spider. I mean, it's just wild. Some of you might remember last time I was here, Josh from the Lee Collection forced me to go out in some sort of hurricane that had 85 exhaust and neon lights and it was just completely mad, but we'd actually have a brilliant time and I'm sure we'd have equally a brilliant time in that thing. But you've got just the ultimate sort of OEM beauty, just complete, you know, factory delivered stunner. And then this, which is just so Tokyo Drift and so wild and they're parked next to each other. So there you go, for me, this is why I call the Lee Collection a crazy collection. Now the Ford GT was already part of the collection when I last visited, it just wasn't here when I was actually here, but the GT2 RS wasn't. And I have to say, I'm such a fan of these things. The 997.2 generation 2 RS is a monster. I did actually have a go in one a few years ago in Dubai. It spins its wheels all the way into fourth gear. <laughs> it just wants to kill you. But what I quite like is there aren't too many older cars in this collection. And okay, fine, the GT2 RS from 2010 isn't exactly that old, but yeah, alongside the 430 Scud and maybe one or two other things, it kind of stands out. And me being a fan of modern classics, I'm a big fan of that. And whilst maybe there are one or two other cars that I've missed, which I'm sure Josh will point out to us in a second, I can't help but move on to the big hitters because boys and girls, Ferrari LaFerrari McLaren P1, it doesn't get much more iconic for a modern car collection and in pretty solid specs. We've got the launch spec Laf, then a pretty stealthy P1 behind me. And it's just, you can't get past these. Both these cars, 10 years old, you know, the world has moved on, but I can't seem to move on from these things. They still look unbelievably modern and still seem to be at the top of so many people's lists. To see them both here is just so freaking cool. I mean, where does this collection go from here? It's, it's got one of everything at this point. Now these so, shoes are terrible by the way. These are really the, the worst shoes. I've had these for nine years. I mean, I could tell. <laughs> anyway. Yes. Joshua, well. welcome back to the channel. Thanks for having me. I think by now, most of my audience know who you are because we spent the entire year together. I just keep bumping into you everywhere. Yeah, practically. Well, you've bothered us here in Australia now. We enjoyed each other's company in Monaco and now you've brought it home to the home plate. I've come back once again. Absolutely. I've basically made an excuse. I'm like, we're taking behind the glass on tour. Just so I come back and see the collection, really. It's good to see you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, now, I just tried to walk around and point out the new additions. Yep. I obviously got distracted a little bit by the heavy hitters at the end. Yep. But I've also, I just lose track as to what was here. How do you keep up with all the cars that you guys have added? There's a few spreadsheets. Okay. Uh, when you were here last year, we had maybe 49 in the collection. Uh, we are now sitting at 121-ish. Wow. By the end of 24, if we don't purchase another car, we'll be around the 180, 190 mark. It's getting a little out of hand. It's getting a, li <laughs> getting a little out of hand. I'm so impressed and amazed though. It is an unbelievable group of cars to look at. And as I say, it's so easy to get distracted because, well, I totally forgot to even point out this. <laughs> yeah, the SCV12. Interesting car. Obviously the Lamborghini's a version of the XX program, the Ascenza. Um, Track only, right? For now. Oh my God, don't say things like that. There's a group of us uh, who want to street, street convert them. So uh, we're looking into that from the factory. Okay, we'll be back for another behind Correct. the glass yeah, yeah, tour yeah, yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, very cool to see. Yeah. What is the big white my back thing? Oh, okay, <laughs> come on, let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it is. 
<laughs> it, you are correct. It is a, it is a Maybach GLS 600. Okay. okay. Or it was. Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. uh, we put a latte design. Uh, I think a Romanian company. Okay, because I thought what a predictable Australian thing if it's named after a coffee, because no. obviously you guys love your coffees. Correct. Okay, latte design. Yeah, or latte or latte. Um, and yes, yeah, so a wide body kit, obviously new front, uh, front bumper, uh, new rear bumper, new wheels, all that kind of stuff. The inspiration behind the whole whiteout, uh, Kim Kardashian has an all grey one from Platinum Motorsports. I half joked that it might be Kim Kardashian's car. And obviously it was a, originally a white car with white interior, so we thought we'd white it out. Okay, Yeah. I mean, good on you. Yeah. I have to say it's got presence. I definitely noticed it. I, I'm, I'm often unfair to your SUV collection. This thing, it's really hard to miss. So I guess you've yeah. nailed the brief there. What else have I overlooked? To say, what else have I, maybe because I, nice. I think maybe the maybe this Elva was here last time, but there's now two freaking Elvas? Yeah, so so two Elvas. That carbon one was here previously. This is a new addition. Okay. Uh, the Countach is a new addition. Since, uh, yeah. All the Lambos. You went Lambo crazy. L a, a, a little, little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there was one day we took delivery of, uh, one week we took delivery of five new Lamborghinis. Oh my God. Uh, that included uh, an STO, a 60th uh, Evo Spider, 60th Technica Huracan, uh, an Aventador SVJ Roadster. We spoke about we spoke about it a little bit in Monaco, and also. Spoke about what? Hold on, bear with me. Uh, when we did the snow tour in yep. the Citroen, it's quite unbelievable, mate. That I've known you for a very long time, and we met in a car park in California where yes. we were both taking photos of cars as spotters. Yes. That you have ended up with. A job that I think we we yes. could have only dreamed of. I mean, <laughs> definitely. I know you work. You, I know you really work hard, and social media and the internet won't see that. But this, mate, this is a joke. I do this for a living, and I'm like, what is going on? It's it's, it's pretty cool. I, I try not to get too excited about it. Or um, a, a, they're not my cars. But B, if if I was engrossed in it, I would my ego would inflate yeah. uh, dramatically, and I don't want that. So, but just be st just to be standing around them. It's it, it's tremendous, and the fact that they're all, all owned by one individual, um, and the fact that they're in Perth and they get driven as well. That's my big thing, and they get yeah. driven and they get modified. Oh. Please explain what is going on here, because okay. last time I came, you showed me something like this, and I tolerated it because it was a Lambo. Was that a Perfumante? Yeah, I mean whatever it was, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember. What have you done to a Ferrari? Take me over, explain this. Uh, uh, well, first and foremost, it is still a Ferrari. <laughs> okay, <for now>. um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> we uh, we like modifying cars. That's that's the, our, our roots are the auto salon and the and the JDM kind of background. And now we want to translate that to, to Europeans. So <laughs> this is a, a, a Mansory F8 XX kit. So it's F8 Spider. Sure. Uh, it's got Novatec Rosso wheels on oh, Novatec now. Novatec Rosso wheels. Uh, and a full Mansory kit. Wow. So the inspiration behind this, and you can see the split wing of the back, is to emulate and mimic the FXXK Evolution, which we have in the collection as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So uh, we plan on matching the, the stripes up to the FXXK Evo. Sure. We've got an SF90XX coming as well, which will match the, uh, the Evo. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of red Ferraris around. Yeah. And you don't want to work hard, you know, tirelessly to drive down the street and see the exact same Ferrari. Fair um, enough. I, you guys have always worked hard, play hard. And as yeah. I said, you showed me that last time I was here. And, you know, it's not for me, Josh. But I, who am I to judge? Who am I to That's judge? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is for me. This is absolutely stunning. Have you had a chance to get behind the wheel of this? Uh, I hope to today i've spent five ten minutes with it over in sydney when we first took delivery okay the a12 platform is it, it's the v12 naturally aspirated how can you go wrong the comp is obviously that next level up uh a lot more power it's it's too much of a car for my my driving skills but it's nice to drive around it sure. um when we ordered we actually ordered this during covid and we couldn't go to the factory so we had to do it obviously via um zoom with taylor made and the comp being such a pivotal, huge, like momentous car, we wanted a, a striking colour, and and so in the the meeting they said, okay, cool, look, let's let, let's look at different colours. What colours you guys think of? Inspiration. We only wanted one, and I said, look, 
We want a Lamborghini collar and we want a Rancho Borealis. Oh my god. <laughs> and the phone call went silent. Yes, that's the moment where the fat should go. Hmm. Well, they said, mm, uh, mm. I'm not going to uh, pretend to put on an Italian accent, but they is dead silence for a few seconds. And they said, well, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, and so what we have effectively is uh, Nuovo Arancio. Ah. Arancio Nuovo. So n new orange. Very interesting. Uh, but... It is a Rancho Borealis. That's amazing. Yep. That's amazing. Well, very, very cool. And the 296 just lurking in the background, which yes. I worry might not stay stock for too long. Oh, uh, what? So what else? Amazing. 4GT wasn't here last time. 4GT wasn't here last time. This has a straight through exhaust on, which wow. sounds pretty tremendous. Okay. Um, the Cyan was here. The Cyan yeah, was, was here, here for sure. Yeah. All the Astons we've added. I mean, the thing is, as we've sort of touched upon, there's so much which isn't even here. So uh, are you keeping stuff? outside the country what, what else are we waiting for we have a collection in in london currently mm -hmm. uh which uh you know we've got the mansory veyron yeah uh the chiron super sport just arrived in the country in sydney okay wow which is extremely exciting very uh, and that will be street registered even better uh our valkyrie amr pro is in sydney that's a joke <laughs> yeah uh there's i mean there's there's a, a big list, big, list very big on. list um sp3 arrives in a couple of months oh my god yeah okay well i'm just gonna have to keep coming back i think Please. once every six months mate if you can help arrange that that I would be so. amazing yeah but we are doing something a little bit unpredictable i guess with the cars today or at least next um we're heading to the sand dunes apparently <laughs> so yeah uh we just bought it or take, took delivery of a dakar 911 yeah um, and it's Lawrence's birthday this weekend. A few people are flying in from the US, Cyprus, London, interstate. So we thought, why don't we get a few SUVs together, head up to Lanslin, which is maybe 90 minutes north of Perth, and hit the sand dunes. I uh, mean, that sounds like the best thing ever. So we got, we got the Dakar, and then everything else is going to be SUV? Yeah, Dakar, Defender 110, three G63s, Urus, Urus Performante. Urus Performante. Yeah, Silverado, two Can Am Mavericks, which are like a gigantic, like spider dune buggy type thing. Sure. And a Cullinan Black Badge. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, shotgun the Cullinan yeah. on the sand dunes. Right, okay, so I feel like none of those cars are here, so I feel like we need to go and, I guess, grab a load of cars and head to the dunes. I think so. Let's do it, dude. Now, when I said, let's go to Australia, let's do a load of live podcast events, we might do some filming with supercars, did you expect for us to end up on some sand dunes with a whole load of super SUVs? No. No. <laughs> Nor did I. Uh, uh, another way for me to sum up how crazy this collection is, because we are here with, yes, Eurus Performante, Ranger Raptors, G-Wagons. We are in a V8 Defender, and as Josh mentioned, we've bought a 911 Dakar, but... And I'm so upset this has happened. It's got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> we literally haven't even arrived. Like we've ridden, we've we've driven to the top of the dune to like uh, get a phone and be like, we're here. Yeah. And it's li it's literally got stuck. So best, best car ever. You. All said. of my chat, like, mate, that is going to be compared to a US performance, the 911. <laughs> I am blaming the driver, <laughs> just like with you and the M3 Touring. Oh, here we go. I'm putting it all down to the driver. He's just literally, he was like, I'm going to park it here on the soft sand and then try and launch it. Absolute fail. Okay. Um, this thing on the very minute drive we did from the car park to this June. g wagons already stuck. incredible. <laughs> yeah. G oh my God, that G-Wagon is a million percent stuck. That's in. <laughs> That's going nowhere. I hope we're not that stuck. Oh my God, look, the Raptor's struggling. I should get this on camera. The Raptor's now struggling to get the Dakar out of the sand. Oh, wow. I mean, this is, this is chaos. <laughs> so essentially, all of these cars here, all of these people, well, how many, do you think there's 25 people there, here? There's, yeah, 20, 25 people, yeah. Two people have been to the dunes before. <laughs> and that's been made evidently clear within the first two minutes, but this is just hilarious. I'm not gonna do too much filming outside the car because it's so windy, and every time you step outside, you get sand in your eyes, but yeah if any of these cars make it back to lee collection hq i will be amazed unbelievable 
Now, things are, things are generally getting worse by the second. <laughs> um, the big Chevy truck came to save the day, ZR2. Americans will be able to tell me that that's got like 3,000 Newton meters of torque. It's got stuck as well. So <laughs> the, the Raptor got stuck trying to save the Dakar. The Chevy pulled out the Raptor. Now the, now the Chevy's got stuck trying to pull out the Dakar. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if any of us, the rest of us, are actually going to have a go today. Or if we're just going to sit around watching. I mean, the G-Wagon's getting more stuck by the second. I mean, this is perfect. This is fantastic. Perfect. Sorry, darling, I can't come home. I'm stuck in the sand dunes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, careful now, Tony. No, no, not too much power, remember? Not well, too much power. Just, just, well, do you want to do it then? No, 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 no. You're fine, you're fine. But maybe just... Yeah, yeah, well done, well done. Well done, well done, son. He's a pro. Momentum, lad. Proper car, isn't it? Where are we going now? Where are we going, mate? Let's just wait. Should we, do we wait here this next to the other here, one? Yeah. Oh my god, this is just chaos. Oh, we've got a big Chevy about to drive into That's us. The thing we've seen. Oh, look, the Raptor's all the way over there, mate. He's freaking. Where? Look. Oh, wow. He's gone to Namib Namibia. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone all the way over there. I mean, I guess that's sort of the vibe. Like, Can we just go for a drive or what? Yes, Tony. Momentum, Tony! Oh, ho, ho. Show those G-Wagons how it's done! -ho -ho -ho. Not too slow! Oh, oh. oh my god, we're drifting! Big rock. <laughs> I mean, fair play to the Euros for Manche, can we just say? It's doing very well. This is so good. This is, this is sick! This is sick! <laughs> Let's move to Australia! <laughs> I can't get over that Euros though. <laughs> it's not, unbelievable. It's mad, isn't it? Now I understand why they all own them in Dubai. It's genuinely good. <laughs> That's why I all understand they own them in Nightbridge. Nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giving it large. Oh, Cavill, big dip there. Big dip, not going down. Cavill, Cavill, go, go. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. You can't see a thing. Oh, oh, oh big crash. Big crash. Euros nearly dead. Oh, that is quite terrifying. We should find somewhere safe to stop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is actually super sketch. Yeah. That is like, how are they getting out of that? I would love to say let's quit whilst we're ahead. I don't think we've ever been ahead on this day. I don't think that. <laughs> and the crazy thing that is Lawrence in the US Parliament and he was laughing his head off. Absolutely. I was like, oh, near death, let's go and help. <laughs> he and get there and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> unreal, this is ridiculous. But I think probably before we all die, let's head back to town.